Hello, welcome back to another Neotech video. Today we are going to be going over pipes. This is kind of a complicated part, but one of the coolest features of this mod. It's very complicated in code and has taken me a long time to get done. So hopefully you guys like it. I put a lot of work into it and this is something that personally has been solely me. I've done all of this not to, you know, say diode doesn't help, but this is just something that was very complicated to do. If you've ever attempted a pipe system, it's not very easy. And this is the implementation I came up with. So without further ado, let's get into the pipe system. So let's go over some of the basics of how the pipe system works. You can see here we have structure pipes. These guys don't do anything. They don't tick. They don't have uh, really much of anything going on with them. Uh, their recipe, fairly cheap, just some iron and some stained glass as you can see you can dye them so we have different colored ones uh, just to demonstrate what those do really quickly I'm going to get two different colors uh, two different colors will not connect so you can see these guys won't connect however white will connect to everybody so keep that in mind if you want to run two pipes next to each other uh, you can do it as such now there's a couple ways you can create colored pipes for one and the way I would recommend is doing it in world so I have some magenta right here click on it now it's magenta this does not use up the die however if you're more of the crafty type you can craft a white structure pipe with a die and it will create the colored variant however that does use up the die so keep that in mind it's easier to place in color than to craft in place now the structure pipes, as I said, don't do anything. They don't have any capacity. They don't hold anything. None of the pipes are item handlers, fluid handlers, or energy handlers. They do not have their own storage. That is because all they do is transfer things from point A to point B. So in order to uh, move things through their relevant things, we need to have a interface pipe. For items, we have a chest and an item interface pipe. We connect that to wherever we want to extract or insert. So here, this is currently extracting, and this is inserting. You can see the orange module means that that side is being pulled from. I can also go from one straight into there. So this is a perfectly valid pump out, pump in two. But to demonstrate some of the more advanced features, I have these two separated out. Now, whenever you place down a pipe into the network, it notifies the network to rebuild its cache. The cache is the storage of the map. So this guy here, this guy here, and this guy here all know the current status of the map. They hold the locations of other pipes. So he is only remembering three locations. Himself, this guy, and that guy. And now he's also looking for valid places to insert into. So he also knows that there's a chest here and a chest here. When there's an update directly next to a pipe, it will notify the other pipes, hey, I have a new inventory. When you're looking for places, you know, look over here too. So this methodology makes things a little bit more efficient. It means that uh, they don't really have to search the map very often. They just know where things are and cycle through them. So let's say we have a pipe. We want to change its mode. As you open it up, you see uh, by default it comes with a filter. This is the main interface of the pipe. These are ghost slots, so you can do that. And you have whitelist. This means that anything up here is uh, the only thing that is allowed in. So as you extract, since this pipe is mainly acting as an extraction pipe, it will only extract things in the whitelist. If there's nothing in it, it will pull everything. So you don't have to use this. It will automatically pull it all. You can also match by or dick tag. So if you want to pull out all or copper, you just put a copper ore in here. And any other mods copper ore will get pulled out if you toggle this to on. It can also match damage. By default, it does not account for damage. So an axe half damage and an axe fully damage will get pulled out. But if you tell it to match the filter's damage value, it will match the damage and only pull out things with that particular damage. The same goes for NBT. If you would like it to match the NBT, you can do so. Now, 
as you saw, we can set the filter on this guy to whitelist or blacklist, meaning that things on this list will not get pulled out. But we can also do the reverse for things that are inserting. So only things on the whitelist will go in, and everything but the things on the blacklist will be accepted. This means you could filter this chest to only accept ores, and you could even match by ore dict, and this chest to accept everything else by leaving it empty. And that's a way to set up a bit of a sorting system if that's something you're interested in. In the future, this will have a uh, storage based, so anything that's currently in the storage it will accept, and it will also have a mod item based. But there's a lot going on with the mod at the moment, and I just have not had the time to do that and add a filter for every face. So those are coming in the future, and at that point, uh, if that's changed in the version that you're playing, I'll put an annotation on this video uh, explaining that those new features should be fairly self-explanatory, so I don't know if I'll need to make a new video. Uh, it, it will have buttons up here for north-south, whatever, whatever face you're using, and then it will also have a couple extra modes. But that's the general idea of how filters work. Now let's get into how these guys work. By default, as you can see, you place it down, and it will, when I place it down the first time, I should do this for you, it looks like this. As you can see, it's set to insert. This is to prevent you from accidentally extracting things you don't want. So in order to set it to extract, we use the same I.O. config as the machines. You can see here I can rotate around the pipe. You can see the, it's based off my orientation. So if I were to stand like this, you can see this face pointing at me. And when I click it, if you look right over here, there it goes. It updated right there. So now we are extracting from this face. There is one more mode, which is green, which does input and extract. But for now, we're going to keep things simple and only pull out of this guy. Now, by default, item and fluid pipes will go to the first available inventory that will accept what it is trying to pull out. Energy behaves slightly differently. So as I go through the item pipe, the same will apply for the fluids, and I'll demonstrate that. But remember that energy is going to behave subtly differently, and I will get to that at that point. So, here's the pipe. I want to put in some pipes. It takes out one at a time, and where did they go? They went to the first available inventory, which was this guy. So, if I filled this guy up with magenta pipes, and then I put in a wrench, where is it going to go? It didn't go here. He went down here. So you can see it does uh, sort of respect that. And of course with the wrench you can rotate stuff. So let's take that out of there. Now that's pretty simple. A pipe extracts and inserts. You can see there it was pulling one item at a time every second. In order to upgrade this, processors will make it go faster. That means the delay in between operations will be reduced. This means it can do up to I think it's like three or four extractions per second at fully upgraded. But where the real bread and butter of the upgrade goes from the hard drive. This is how big of a resource it will extract. So I'm going to install this guy, and we'll get to these tabs here in a moment. And now, when it pulls, it will pull out a stack at a time and put it in here. So each hard drive increases the item count by eight and for fluids it increases the millibuckets, and for energy it increases the amount of RF transferred. That's really the main upgrade for pipes. Now, control upgrade gives you this. The redstone mode. That's fun. Um, I'm going to leave it disabled. And it also gives you frequency. Frequency is your way to distinguish interface pipes to only interface with each other even on the same network. So as you can see here, we have three interface pipes on a single network, which is connected by the structure pipes. And of course, these can be any color. These could be magenta if I wanted to. Oops. So, as you can see, this is all one network. So, if I were to put something in here, it would go to here. Now, say I don't want this guy on the same frequency. I only want this chest to talk to that guy. Uh, let's say I have another extraction pipe over here that I want to talk to him but I don't want to run two cables. So I'm going to set your frequency to one. Now if I come over here and install a control upgrade, I will set you to one as well. If I don't set you to one, when this guy's trying to extract, he's gonna say, nobody's on my frequency. But if I come over here and set you to one, 
Now when I go back, where did the dirt go? Well, he said I'm on the same frequency, we can talk to each other. So that's how frequencies work. They're essentially a way to have different uh, sub-networks using the same grid. This can save you a lot of space on pipes. So that's how that works. The, by default, they all set to zero, and when you take the motherboard out, it will reset it to zero. So you have to have the motherboard installed to do that. And lastly, we have the extraction mode. This is a fairly advanced feature. It comes with the expansion upgrade. So put in a motherboard with the expansion upgrade, and you will have the ability to access this tab. Again, items and fluid interface pipes will default to first available. However, you can also set last available. So if I were to put dirt in here, by default, it would go to first available and this guy, but that guy's further away. So it's not in here. It went here. Also, I am going to say round robin. So now, because it pulls out a stack at a time, I need to put in two stacks, but now each chest will get a single stack because it does a round robin through the network. If I had four stacks and I had two more interface pipes over here, it would do as you'd expect and round robin between all of them. Now, this is essentially the item pipe in a nutshell. Fairly simple, you upgrade it, it moves items, it can go fairly far. Once it's cached the map, it has pretty much figured it out. So let's say we want to install a tank. Let's get a tank. Let's say an iron tank. Let's get it rid of all this junk and let's say I've got him over here but I want to move his contents over here because I don't really want the stuff in this tank to do this I need some fluid interface pipes so in order to make interface pipes you make a regular pipe and you combine it, it can be uh, any color with a chest for iron, uh, item and a bucket for fluid interface pipes so these guys pretty cheap not very expensive the expensive part comes in the setting it up. So as you can see, I'm running this straight through this network. So now, everybody now is talking to each other. But only fluid interfaces will talk to fluid interfaces, which I forgot to put here. So as you can see, he's inputting there. So let's set you to pull out on the side. That's what the little orange guy means. And he's going to end up over there. So let's put in a bucket of, let's just do lava. That's easy. So let's put in the bucket of lava, and where'd it go? Now it's over here. So let's say I want to use my existing cables, and I want to go out here, and way over here. So as you can see, this even travels through other interface pipes. And while I'm at this, I'm going to demonstrate the multi-part integration. So if you have chisels and bits, uh, good news you can do some fun stuff with them. You can put covers on them. Ta-da! Um, that's not really where I wanted it. So let's do this. I need to get rid of you. And let's put some covers here to prevent him, this guy, from talking across there. So you can cover blocks and prevent connections using multi-block covers. I believe there is a mod out there that adds solely covers, so that will work as well. And, of course, we work with chisels and bits, so you can put bits all over your pipes. So, as you can see here, this pipe is traveling through, it goes through another interface pipe, and it ends up at a tank. So now, if I go and put the bucket of lava in here, it gets extracted all the way over here. So, interface pipes also act as members of the network while moving things through. So, you can have a line of interface pipes and also send fluids through those. This is where some of the strong points of this pipe system comes in. Everybody talks on a grid. If there's a connection, even through other types of pipes, there will be a transfer of resources. So that's pretty cool. So let's do some more fun with it. I'm not going to go into the upgrades here with the uh, fluid interface pipe because they're the same as the other, except the filter is limited solely to buckets and whatnot. There is no ore dict or anything for it. So, now let's get some energy pipes. These work significantly different from the rest of the pipes. So, just for fun, I'm going to stick this guy here. And see, he's, he's actually connected to another interface pipe. 
And let's get a battery and stick him here. Let's give him a solar panel just so he's got some energy in him. And now he's picking up some energy. So if I set this guy to extract mode and anything I connect off of this, so if I come over here and pop an energy face here, pop an energy face here, and uh, let's just do those two. If I were to put two energy cells here, he's getting power and he's getting power. So this is where the differences of the energy interface Ace interface pipes come in uh, compared to the others. For one, you can see these are both getting uh, equal amounts of power. That is because energy interfaces operate on the round robin by default. You can upgrade them and change them to first available, should you please, but for most people, this is all you want. So now, with our pipe network, which we could have under our house, under our floor, cover it with chisel and bits, anywhere we put an energy energy interface pipe in the network it will be getting power from this guy so he as you can see is draining and transferring per tick so the energy interface pipe does not have a second cooldown it has a per tick cooldown so by adding processors you're not reducing the delay however to be fair we have made it so that if you put processors into an energy interface pipe it will do the same thing as the hard drive and increase the amount transferred per tick. So hard drive and processors do the exact same thing in the energy interface pipe until we find a way to make it more fun. But at the moment, that's all we really care to do. So now, you can see all my people here are talking on this network. So energy is getting sent to here, it's getting sent to here. If I had some machines, I could have a system of pipes under the floor pull some item interface pipes up where I need to interface with the machines, uh, give it an energy interface pipe where it needs energy, and all of this will be happening on the same network. And if I wanted, I could cover it all up with some chisels and bits. So I have a nice hidden network under my floor. So that's a lot about how the pipes work. Um, and make sure I'm not missing anything here. There are the different kinds of pipes. There used to be acceleration pipes, but because things transfer instantaneously, there is no travel through the pipe. There is actually a simulation occurring where this pipe is sending energy here. So they're essentially just pretending that they're next to each other. So this reduces a lot of lag. There's not a lot of calculations going on here. Um, it's just sending stuff over the network. We've done some profiling of these pipes and they're very efficient. I can't, um, I can't stress that enough. There's been a lot of work into make thing, making these things very efficient, which is why they don't even render things in them anymore. So that's essentially what I've got there on the pipes. They extract everything on the network. It's something that is subtly different from how other pipe systems have worked in the past, but once you start playing with it and getting your head around some of the more advanced capabilities of the system, being able to share a single structure pipe, it gets kind of fun. So if you want to upgrade the amount getting sent through the pipe, you don't upgrade the pipes. If I want to provide more power into my network, I need to upgrade this extraction pipe. By upgrading only this extraction pipe, anything connected to the network will now get more RF per tick. You don't have to upgrade the insert pipe. So this guy right here, you can see it's going up a little slow. Let's install a motherboard and see what happens when I put that in there with full stuff. So now this guy is going to be getting a lot more RF per tick if I can open the inventory. Or it should be. Um, I, I believe this readout is currently wrong at the moment. That's something I'm actually working on at the moment. So ignore that, but it is getting more energy per tick. And it is actually throttled by how much this guy can put out. Uh, actually, no, that, that reading is right. Okay, excuse me. The problem is this guy is only generating 120 RF per tick. So that's getting split between these two guys, which is why they're both reading 120 a tick. Because he gets 128, he gets 128 goes back and forth and we're all good. So mod's not broken, I'm just misunderstanding my own energy system. So ignore me 
as I say that, um, if I were to say put a bunch more of these here and put some more solar panels on top, boom, 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 and set them to extract, let's give a little more power to our network here. Set to extract. Now we should see these guys getting more power. Yes, see they're getting significantly more power now because the battery is getting more power and this is keeping up with whatever's in the battery. So again, um, these pipes are keeping these drained fairly efficiently. So a base pipe is probably enough to pull out of this. And that is pipes. It's getting in 128 from the top. It does at the moment the batteries don't display additive amounts, but it's pulling out 640. So each of these should be getting 640 RF per tick. Again, this is a current work in progress. I'm trying to find the best way to cache the amount coming in without being crazy and overcomplicated. But at the moment, that's what we have. This is the pipe system. It's fairly close to what I would say done. It works, does what you want. Um, the only thing you might want to be aware of is because these guys are not actually storing an internal buffer, they need to be able to pull from something. So um, if you automatically output to a pipe, it's not going to automatically move things through the network, if that makes any sense. So if I set this guy to automatic output and attach an item interface pipe, it would not automatically send through the pipe. This needs to be explicitly set to extract. And then it will pull out into whatever, which that doesn't even matter. So keep that in mind as you use this system. Again, I understand it is slightly different from many systems, but as we are one of the first ones in 1.8, what was more important was designing a very stable, efficient, and hopefully simple machine or pipe system so that you can get up and running. As more mods update, you'll have those available, but for the moment, this is where we're at. If you have any suggestions, please feel free to leave them. All right, on to the next video where we will go over some of the miscellaneous machines and the tanks.